Hello, welcome to my Chasing M2 Light Arm V1 placement test. Uh, today we're here in the Puget Sound, which is near Seattle, Washington, uh, at Muckleteo T Dock, which is a popular dive site. Uh, you can see here that uh, there are a lot of fish, and this is not what it looks like when I dive here. Um, there's always a lot of life here, but I, these fish are just not afraid of this drone. Um, you can see that there is still some uh, backscatter in this video. Uh, when it was in the factory position, it uh, yeah, it was barely unusable. It was, there was so much backscatter that it was really hard to see. Um, this is in full day brightness. Um, we're at 54 feet. This is in Celsius here, so it's roughly about that. Um, and uh, I'm just kind of doing some tests as far as just doing some maneuverability around all these obstacles, trying to get in close to some of the pipes. A uh, lot of life here. Really like this dive site. Uh, I just tipped the unit kind of on its side a little bit to make it look level, but this is actually on a good slope. Uh, you'll see later as I pan around how that actually looks. Uh, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner here uh, a quick view of what that in the cell looks like that the lights are sitting on. Um, they just stick out a little bit further, move it further away from the lens, which gets rid of some backscatter and helps me angle the lights a little bit more. Um, you definitely can see how I'm still getting full range of light. It kind of teeters a little bit towards the top, but again, that's because it's angled. Uh, those are plumous anemones that are on all the pipes. Uh, there's sea cucumbers, there's some crabs, some flatfish. Uh, trying to see what else is around here. Definitely a lot of anemones. Um, wonderful sight. There's a slight amount of current, so you kind of see it shaking almost like where it's moving to its right and down slightly, and that's just me doing slight adjustments to the to the current and also because the unit is tipped slightly uh, and pitched downward that um, I need to actually do those corrections. As I pull away you can start to see more of the ambient light what it looks like in the background versus what's coming off from the lighting from the M2. And again, the, the unit is uh, pitched a little bit to its left, so it looks a little flat, but that's a pretty good drop off there. That's the deep line that actually travels slightly northerly and drops down to about 120 feet to some more um, underwater uh, artificial reefs. Uh, I was going to head down there, but then chose it probably wasn't the best time to do that, and I should probably stick around the dome. Uh, you can definitely see how it darkens very, very quickly going down that slope. Um, probably you can see down to about 80 feet at that particular point. And you can kind of see from the angle of the fish that I still have the ROV pitched on its side. <laughs> Pretty deceptive. This school of fish uh, actually follows the ROV back up a little bit. At one point, I do turn around, and uh, 
you'll see all the fish back behind it. I, I'm not quite sure what that is or why they were doing that, but I uh, found it rather interesting. Uh, you can see the limited sight distance sign. That's the marker for the deep line. Uh, it was just, well, it would have been about 180 degrees from where we're at currently. Definitely see the upslope. Uh, it's a pretty good embankment. There's a flatfish or two swimming around here. Again, you can see the range from the lighting. Um, again, and the, the amount of backscatter in this view. Uh, there's a lot of sediment in our water here in the Puget Sound. So. Uh, There's a lot of work being done at this dive site uh, by the uh, oh, friends of Michael Teo. Um, so actually, let's see, I'm turning right now. I believe when I pan back down, because I'm up in depth quite a bit from where I was, you can actually see the fish that we're following. Just kind of panning around and stopping and just seeing how the unit actually held true to its spot versus the uh, current that's actually in play here. All those moving particulates is the current. I think we're at a point one or somewhere right around there or not. It's not, not a lot, but you can definitely see it moving. And there's the fish. They decided to follow me. I thought that was rather interesting. I've never noticed that diving, so I must be the uh, mother fish. You can kind of see the dome back to the right there a little bit. They didn't stray too far away, or maybe they're just naturally out there, but I didn't see them on the way down. Uh, here you can see part of the stuff that's being worked on at the Makutio site, and that's uh, George's Rock uh, Wall. I don't know what they're actually officially calling it, but it's just a way to find your way out to the geodome. Um, got some natural breaks and stuff for uh, the uh, snails that actually go back and forth through there and other uh, wildlife as they get back and go back and forth. Moon snails is what I'm thinking of here. Uh, they put a lot of work into this. I can definitely see as we shallow up here how it gets uh, less visibility. Grab. And that's the safety line at 25 feet. And uh, the viz was really bad above. 25 feet. It gets much worse here in the video. You can see the wall kind of tapers a little bit here and it gets very difficult to see. Um, so at one point I was having a, getting a lot of questions from people at the surface, so well, where I was standing I should say, and I uh, uh, was having some conversations with some people so they don't want to keep running to the ground and it was kind of hard to see so I finally just shallowed up the drone a little bit and then got my compass heading and came in using the instruments. Um, the funny thing was uh, my buddy George, who's been doing a lot of work on this, was out there diving. He was diving just in case, uh, well, doing some maintenance work obviously, but also just in case I got snagged. I wanted to make sure somebody was out and available. Um, but as I came cruising back in, I, I literally out of the entire ocean almost ran into him. Um, I was looking away and just happened to catch it last second. There he is. And oh crap, almost hit him, backed up a little bit, and tried to keep the tether out of his way <laughs> as he was digging for a rock. He's probably pulling more rocks out to add to that trail. So, more power to you, George. That pretty much concludes the light test. Uh, you can really see the visibility was bad. We can still see George, but just barely. I think he had a hard time with focusing in this area, and I'm probably not more than. 10 feet away from him here. Um, but again, just didn't want the tether to be pulled behind me and then lap up on him. And that really concludes the video. Thanks for watching.